Hello, this is Takoa Lawson. Welcome to AP Physics 1. I hope these lessons benefit you while you study the AP Physics 1 material. This is a brief overview of the introduction to AP Physics 1, unit number 1. First, we'll talk about the College Board Big Ideas. These are major themes that run through many of the different questions that will be asked on the exam at the end of the year, and they're pretty much areas of emphasis that the College Board thinks connects all the different topics, and it does really go through many of the different topics that we'll study throughout the year. Then we'll get into the introductory stuff that you find in most science courses, starting with a discussion a little bit about the nature of science, or science as a field or discipline. We'll look at physics as a field and how it relates to a lot of other fields, different career paths, different areas of study. Then we'll talk about some of the subtle differences between models, theories, and laws. And then we'll go into measurement and uncertainty, or using significant figures in calculations and measurements. I'm sure you were hoping that that was the end of this unit, but it's not. Um, as well as going over some of that basic background stuff emphasized in the last slide, we will go over units and standards and the SI system, which will be very important. It'll be very crucial. You're already comfortable with the SI system. If you're not already comfortable with the SI system, we'll be using it a lot. But I have great confidence that most of you have been using it throughout chemistry in several of your classes before entering this class. So it shouldn't be too much of a challenge. Then we'll talk about converting between different types of units. It's very important. There's been some blunders in science in the past where people weren't careful about unit conversions. And many of the problems that you'll see in this course and on the exam at the end of the year will give you values that have units that will have to be converted before you can actually compute or determine a correct mathematical answer. After that, we'll talk about how to do rapid estimations, basically being able to use orders of magnitude to get an approximate um, logical or reasonable answer according to the information that's provided. It just gives us a way of kind of either coming up with a quick estimate if we don't want to waste time on a calculation, or if we did the calculation and we just want to see whether or not our answer is reasonable or something that we think is within a reasonable proximity of a correct answer. Then we'll get into dimensional analysis, which will be an important skill. Um, probably the most important part of this lesson, other than the big ideas, in my opinion, dimensional analysis will help you solve problems rapidly and will make it so that you're able to get correct answers um, with much smaller chances of error once you master this skill. So let's discuss these main ideas, or in other words, the College Board's big ideas that run throughout the curriculum. There are seven big ideas, but let's start by looking at the first three. The first big idea, as you can see, is really being able to discriminate between what we define as an object and a system. The truth is, you really get better at telling the difference between an object and a system throughout the year as we do more and more examples. But essentially, everything in the universe can either be described as an object or a system. And the truth is, sometimes one object can be an object or a system depending on the perspective or how you're looking at it for that specific problem. But basically, when we don't care about the inner workings or the smaller parts, that describes an object and we do care about there being inner workings or smaller parts and their interactions, then we're no longer describing an object, we're describing a system. I've seen a lot of different examples, and um, we could talk about all sorts of different ways of looking at different things, but one of the examples I saw that made sense to me and hopefully will make sense to you is thinking about something like a tennis ball flying through the air. If all we care about is the fact that the ball is moving and we're trying to describe its motion, we don't care about what the materials are or how they interact with each other whether it's hard or soft, or what the molecules inside might be doing, then it's an object. However, if it's impacting something, and we're talking about how it changes shape, and why it might have a different change in shape, or might have a different way of impacting a wall than something like a billiards ball or a pool ball, then we care about the inner parts, and it's no longer simply an object. Now it's a system, and we care about those inner workings and how they interact with each other. So we just want to be able to tell the difference between whether we want to know their smaller pieces and what are they doing, or we acknowledge they're smaller pieces, but how they're interacting is either not important or not something we're interested in looking at for that specific problem. The second big idea is that we use field theory to describe the universe. This will come up a lot, especially when we look at gravity and electricity or how electric charges interact with each other. Basically, any force that acts at a distance, anytime you have something what we call a field force, a force that can act through space, it doesn't actually require it to be in contact, which would be a contact force, 
then there has to be some associated field that makes that force capable of doing what it is. So the big fields we'll talk about are gravitational fields, electric fields, and magnetic fields. The third big idea, or the one we'll end up moving on from this slide for, is that different interac interactions can happen, but the interactions are always caused or always results of forces between the bodies, right? So basically, anytime an object interacts with another, another object, it's because there was some kind of force of interaction. Sometimes that force will be a contact force because they've run into each other. Sometimes that force will be a field force describing about what we did with Big Idea 2. The truth is, even contact forces oftentimes are the result of field forces, but we'll get into that later. Big Idea 4 is very similar to Big Idea 3, except for while Big Idea 3 describes the interactions between objects, Big Idea 4 is the fact that systems can interact with each other. You can actually have two different systems that also interact with each other, and those interactions can actually cause changes in those systems. So it's just really kind of taking an idea of Big Idea number 3, which is you can have objects that interact, and saying that you can also have systems that interact. Big Idea number 5 talks about how changes that occur are always a result of interactions that are governed by the laws of conservation. So physics has identified many laws of the universe, but some of the key laws that we'll be describing are the laws of conservation. Big ones are things like the law of conservation of energy, the law of conservation of mass, the law of conservation of momentum. All of these laws must be obeyed. So whatever the interactions are that we're describing, whatever the changes are that we're describing, we have to make sure that they're always consistent with the laws that we know to be true, or at least that we have a lot of reason to believe are true. The last two big ideas that we want to make sure that we have a good understanding are of are big idea number six, which is really a description of wave theory. Waves is going to be a very important topic that we're going to look at in the later on in the year. It helps us understand how energy transfers from one place to another. We'll use some unique descriptions for energy and waves that we can apply to the particle nature of the universe. We'll also use some key vocabulary that will be specific to waves and how they behave. Um, some of the big things we'll talk about really is how a wave is simply a disturbance propagating through the universe. Even when we have something referred to as a standing wave, which appears to have the wave trapped in one specific location, even that type of wave has a disturbance that's moving, it's just staying within a confined region. The last big idea, big idea number seven, is all about basic quantum theory. And fortunately for us, it's a very important and a big idea I think that most of you will find intriguing. It's not something we're going to have to cover because it's exclusive for the AP Physics 2 curriculum. So we'll really have six big ideas that are going to show up in our problems. Um, any of you that are interested in talking about big idea number seven, I encourage you to come and make time and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Or as usual, with anything you find interesting, you're welcome to look at different research areas or different places where you can find information about it yourself.